Great to be here. This is my second gathering for Gardner. Uh, since it's number 12, I thought I would challenge myself to try to share with you 12 ways to try second angle in 10 minutes. So we'll see if we can do it. Um, your first thought may be, um, isn't this impossible? Hasn't it been proven impossible for since uh, 1837? Um, not exactly. So here's 12 ways to try second angle. Uh, the first one is sort of a, a lame, obvious one. This is probably what um, uh, kids would do in school, which is to use a protractor. So um, we could line up our protractor. This angle that I have here is 66 degrees. So a third of that is 22, and we can trisect the angle. OK, go for it. Uh, so this, uh, this is a perfectly good way to trisect an angle if you have an integer number of degrees and it's divisible by 3. Uh, but if you don't, then uh, you're going to have to approximate things. Um, so uh, uh, maybe a better statement is that in 1837, Pierre Wansell proved that it's impossible to trisect an angle with a compass and straight edge, right? Well, that's not exactly right. Here is a, here's an angle, a 90 degree angle. We can uh, look at the first few pages of Euclid's Elements and we know how to construct an equilateral triangle. And this angle is exactly one third uh, the angle that we started with. So maybe a better statement is it's impossible to trisect an arbitrary angle with a straight edge and compass. Uh, well, that is true, but we still have to be careful. Um, our straight edge is assumed to be unmarked. If we had a marked straight edge, we can trisect an arbitrary angle. This goes back to Archimedes. So the idea is that we have this straight edge. It has a mark on it, or a mark in the, the end point is really the way we're thinking about this. And so here's how it goes. First, we extend this line segment. Then we draw a circle that has a radius equal to the distance between the mark and the end. Uh, that by itself isn't so non-Euclidean. That's fine. Here's the tricky part that we uh, really use the mark on the straight edge. So this is called a nusis construction. What I'm going to do here is slide the straight edge so that uh, one end is on the horizontal line, the mark is on the circle, and the other edge passes through uh, this point here, and then that angle is exactly uh, theta over 3. It's this beautiful construction. Um, and people got a lot of mileage coming up with variations of this. Here's a, here's a silly one. This is called Hermes Compass, named after H. Hermes. So there's this crazy object here. Uh, suppose we have this compass and an ordinary compass and a straight edge. So the first thing we can do is use this compass and then our ordinary straight edge to draw a circle. And then we can situate this compass exactly so it's like the marked straight edge. And that angle is theta over 3. So this is Hermes compass. Um, another example, if we have other types of straight edge variants, like this so-called tomahawk. So uh, the way this is constructed is the um, the horizontal edge there is divided into three equal parts. And uh, this right here is uh, a circle that has its center right here. And if we line this thing up exactly, then we draw lines through those two points. That's exactly the trisection of the angle. The proof is, is very easy. We just see that we have three congruent right triangles right here. Um, similar, uh, similar type proof here is that you can use a carpenter's square to trisect an angle. Um, not just any carpenter's square will do. What we need here is we need to know how wide this part of the uh, square is. And we need these marks here um, that are, have the same distance. So here's how this goes. We uh, first draw a horizontal line equal to the width of one leg of the carpenter's square. And then we carefully line up our carpenter square so that one corner is on this line. This passes through the second mark. And then the first mark and the corner exactly trisect the angle. And again, just like the tomahawk, the key behind this is that we have these three congruent right triangles. So this was 1928. <clears throat> um, there's a long and long, long, long history of coming up with uh, curves other than circles and straight lines that we can use in geometry to solve some of these impossibility problems. Here's probably the first one. Um, this is called the quadratrix. Um, so what you're going to see now is the top of this square is going to fall from the top to the bottom. And the left hand side is going to fall like a tree tipping over. And where these two intersect, that's going to give us the quadratrix. And so here's how we would use this curve to trisect an angle. 
Here's our angle. We can use our compass and straight edge to draw this line segment. Uh, we can trisect line segments easily with a compass and straight edge. So that's, uh, that's a trisection of the line segment. And then if you pay attention to what, the way the quadratrix was generated, you can see that this angle here is going to be exactly theta over 3. So that's one example. I'll give you one more. There are many, many examples. Uh, this one was due to Maclaurin. Um, here is his curve. I'll show you how this is generated. We're going to start off with tr two rays, one coming out of A, one coming out of B, and they're both going to rotate counterclockwise with the blue one going three times as fast. And that's going to trace out this curve. Okay? And because of the way that was generated, if we draw any angle theta here, then this angle is going to be exactly theta over 3. So this is the trisectatrix of Maclaurin. There are many, many other examples of curves that can be used to trisect an angle. Um, also, you can use uh, various mechanical drawing devices to trisect an angle. Um, this one was invented by Descartes. Um, briefly, the idea is that it has a bunch of hinges here that uh, allow this thing to open and close. Uh, these two uh, slide in tracks along the arms, and there's a pencil at this point, which as you open it will draw a curve. Um, the other key fact that you need to know is that all of these line segments have, length, uh, have the same length. Am I running out of time here? Uh, and so here's how you would trisect the angle using this one. So maybe I'm not going to get through all 12. <clears throat> What's that? Go. Go, go. Okay. I'll go as fast as I can. Okay. What's that? Two more minutes. Two more minutes. All right. Two more minutes. Okay. Good. Uh, and so you can use an ordinary compass and straight edge uh, to basically reconstruct the device, which would, uh, could be used to uh, trisect the angle. Uh, this one I just saw the other day. This is sort of a modification of one that I saw on the internet. So here is the idea. Uh, if you had your angle and you drew it on the bottom of a cylinder, and now suppose your cylinder is wrapped in a piece of paper. So we put the two marks on the piece of paper. We unfold it. Here's A, B. As I said before, we can trisect a line segment easily. So we can trisect this line segment. We can wrap it back around the cylinder, and we can use those marks to uh, trisect the angle. So a cylinder and a piece of paper. Uh, also, using paper, um, there's this famous uh, construction uh, that allows us to trisect an angle using origami. Uh, I'm just going to briefly whiz through this. Uh, here is our angle that we would like to trisect. We first fold it horizontally anywhere we want. Then we fold the bottom half in half again and open it back up. Uh, here's the trickiest part of the construction. We take this corner here and fold it so that it hits this line. We take this corner and fold it so it hits this line. So it looks like this. That's the key step. Uh, then you can fold, uh, so fold your paper so that it lines up with this fold that you already had. Um, and open it back up, fold it, and that is a trisection of the angle. You can get the other one by bisecting the, the angle that's remaining. So that's a beautiful construction. And I'm sure I'm running out of time here. So my last one is how you could use a clock to trisect an angle. So here's our angle theta. We're going to put the face of a clock so that, um, and line it up so that it's noon with uh, one leg of our angle. And then we wait, in this case, 23 minutes until <laughs> our minute hand is on this line. Then this angle is exactly theta over 12. And you double that two times, and that will give you the trisection of the angle. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much.